Hey guys and welcome to another episode of Everyday EDC. My name is Tyler and today I'm going to be doing basically showing you all my shit. Um, yeah, to put it eloquently, right? So this bag I have contains most of my stuff when regarding knives. It contains my mat that I work with. Um, it contains my knives. It contains everything. So uh, FYI, I'm using this zoomed out at a 0.5 zoom out so if this is annoying or something leave it in the comments I'm just trying to give you guys a little bit bigger picture of what's going on here I'm basically gonna be doing a full-blown dump of everything I have in this in this bag so in the first pocket I have a bunch of knives that I intend to give away this video was posted last night maybe on what I'm actually giving away so get them out here we have the CJRB Baranka the Benchmade bug out we called it the fug out because it has that fucking counterfeit blade on there but I do have the other blade for it somewhere so whenever I ship that out you will get the original hardware and blade with it I have my QSP Pelican my DeWalt school bus I'm gonna call it the school bus because it reminds me of a school bus and then the CJRB Centros. These are all the giveaway knives that I uh, did last night. And here I have some hand cream. I'm not really sure why that's in there in case I have dirty hands or something going into a knife cleaning. In this upper pocket here, I have my QSP Puffin. I also have my Defcon Kabuto. Yeah. I'll store my little kid in there too. I will save the review knives for last. In the next drawer, thanks to Justin, I keep my emblem that Justin made me earlier on in the channel. Friggin' awesome. I use that in every video. Let's see, in this pocket I have my lube, my Weeha bit driver, my scale, my faulty tape measure that may need a uh, quality check. We have our calipers that are kind of garbage. I need to replace those. Somebody once asked me what these are. I think this is a KME set. I got this a little while back. I don't remember. It's kind of the same thing as the Weeha. It's just a little bit, you know, it's obviously a little bit different. Uh, but I got two of them just in case. We have some blue Loctite. And that's it for that one. For the last big pouch, I have a pouch of knives. A black marker that comes in handy more times than not when you're screwing around with knives mainly for reasons of sharpening or cutting off you know the the address on the boxes when I'm trying to do an unboxing because I made the mistake in the beginning of showing my address a couple times I had to delete those videos I should have just edited them but I just deleted them so we're gonna talk about those two knives in a second I'm gonna go over some knives that I have to review I still have on the list to review. First one that just came in, the DEFCON TP68. I was unsure of the name of this knife when I got it in. Um, pretty cool knife. A couple, couple flaws with it, but for 39 bucks, you can't be mad. The CRKT CEO. I still got to do a review on this guy. I tried to start it and I found myself just hating on the knife, so I stopped and kind of took a breath. Our Concept Cryo. Love this knife. This knife's friggin' awesome. Have to review this still. And then the Civivi Odium. Which, I'm not even gonna, I'm not gonna try to do anything like that, but, like that. Like, I'm gonna review these, but god damn it, this is the perfect size and I've never asked for a lanyard hole in my life. Why wouldn't you put a lanyard hole on the Odium? It's the perfect knife to do it. Okay, so I'm gonna open up the knife case kind of go over what each knife is, the purpose of the knife, why I have it, what I intend to do with it in the future, kind of what it means to me, if anything, right? So this knife case my wife got me, um, it was only like 15 bucks on Amazon. Uh, obviously we will have to upgrade it one day, but you know, whenever the wife gets you something, it kind of means a little bit more than most when you do it. Actually, these two can slip back in here. So we are gonna start from the top right, this is just the Rat Model 1. There is nothing special about this knife other than a perfect comparison knife. 
Um, I really don't, Rat Model 2, I'm sorry. I really don't prefer the Rat Model 2 at all. The Rat Model 1, on the other hand, is a killer. This thing's awesome. Again, I don't use this knife more so than a, uh, really just a reviewing knife. The, the reason that I, I want to use it more, but I end up, when you're reviewing knives and you try to keep that pace, you're always carrying something that you may or may not choose to carry. Like, I don't know that I would ever choose to carry this Odium with the size and everything, but I'm kind of forced to carry it because you gotta, you got to carry it for a while before you give it an honest review. Next on the list is my Civivi Elementum. Now, on one hand, I love this guy. On the other hand, I did butcher it with the mods that I tried to make, and one day we're going to dye these scales black, and I'll do that on video. Um, the other thing, the other reason that I'm keeping this knife, short of the fact that I screwed it up, um, and actually I fixed the action and the centering damn near perfect on it, so it feels back to almost better. But I'm keeping this because this is one of Civivi's, what would you say... I'm, what is my kid doing? Hold on one sec. Thank you. All right. So this is this is Civivi's kind of what's the what's the flagship knife? It's not their flagship, but it's their you know the Praxis and the the Backlash were really their flagships. But this thing's taken over as like their go-to everything is this awesome knife. So. I gotta keep that for future references. I almost got rid of my backlash, and those of you that have been with me since the beginning know that I absolutely love this knife. Um, unfortunately, with everything kind of going on and you go through so many different knives, I just I don't get a chance to carry this, and most of the time I kind of don't choose to. I tried to make this the <laughs> channel knife and screwed up. I'll probably sand that down and either try again or do a stencil like uh, somebody was mentioning. <sighs> This is the Civivi Dogma. I don't think I'll ever get rid of this until I upgrade it. Reason being is, is I want to, A, compare the upgraded model to this. Second, I want to, uh, this is my King Civivi. I, I ran through 90% of the Civivi lineup in this tournament that I did earlier on in the channel. And this one won as objectively as possible. I didn't think it was going to win, but after it won, I kind of get it. Like, it, it makes sense. This thing's pretty awesome. In my opinion, probably one of Civivi's best knives ever, right there. Here we have the Best Tech Bison. This is just on loan from Corey over there at the Practical Blade. Thank you again, just like the CRKT CEO. Uh, we're kind of uh, swapping knives back and forth so that we can kind of get a feel on knives that we've never felt. Plus, it gives us some more content for the channels. Uh, awesome knife, questionable price with the D2 blade, but take that for what you will. This is the Revo Berserk. I almost gave this one away too. Um, I like this knife a lot. I think the ergonomics on it are awesome. I might try to play with this and fix that detent because it should not do that. That's kind of scary. But it's interesting, so I'm going to keep that for a while. This one. The QSP Copperhead. This is the poor man's Super Freak, in my opinion. Um, ergonomics are very similar to the Super Freak. It's a very solid knife. It feels very robust. And check this action out. Oh my goodness. I played with it a little bit. I took it apart, cleaned it up, and you could spidey flick it, thumb flick it, uh, and the action, it's almost super fall shut. I mean, that thing's freaking great. That's the QSP Copperhead. That thing's awesome. Here's the Honey Badger Warncliffe style. Um, this knife I am keeping around, and I don't know if I intend to ever get rid of this. A, maybe I'll give it away one day. I mean, it's just one of those that I probably won't really get any money on return for it. But B... It's, it's a honey badger, and I want to keep kind of one knife from each brand to say that I've had one knife from each brand. I've reviewed it, and I have something to go back to if I ever choose to reference that again. Uh, this, as you guys know, is my QSP Puffing. This is my go-to small knife in hand, uh, my everyday carry for small stuff. The other one used to be my, my Farron Forge Falcon, which I'm trying to give a little bit more love right now. I'm like, man, I feel bad. I haven't carried these. These two are probably forever knives. Um, I know I complained about not having the thumb studs on this thing, but as it broke in, I fixed the action on it so there's no act, no blade player or nothing. Look at this action, guys. On this small knife. I mean, oh my goodness. QSP knocking it out of the park for me. Even, even the, the Penguin was freaking awesome. So let's start down here. We have the Civivi Darus. The Civivi Darus was the first knife that led me 
to the Falcon. Um, the Falcon I like is like a better version of the Dauris in my opinion, but it's also more expensive. And two, this was my first, first freaking like, oh my goodness from Civivi. I got it in hand and it like changed my mind on most things. Uh, I, I really do like this knife and I really don't think this is going anywhere. This is kind of the product of the backlash and the Praxis had a love child. And uh, I think Justin made that reference in the past. And it's just, uh, I, I, this, this is one of my favorite knives, 100% from Civivi. Every, every Civivi knife that I've kept is my favorite knife, short of the Elementum. I like it. It's not my favorite. Dogma, not my favorite, but King Civivi. Backlash was my first love from Civivi. But the Dauris, whew. Awesome, awesome freaking knife. Super slicey, too. This is Civivi's Fracture. It's the only slip joint knife that I that I currently ha uh, keep, and I'm keeping it because, I, from my understanding, it was supposed to be like a limited edition run A. B, it was like Civivi's, like, thank you for making us so good at this now because basically it got to the point where Civivi blew up and it was kind of their quote-unquote appreciation knife for 28 bucks. Pretty cool little slip joint. Um, I don't know that I would ever use it, but because of its, its kind of value when it comes to what it means, I don't think it'll ever leave my collection. Here we have the CRJB Feldspar and the Mini Feldspar. Now these two I like. Um, the Mini Feldspar in particular I really liked. Uh, I really don't carry these. These are more for size references. For those of us that have seen the large and small feldspar or, you know, I try to use knives that everybody has seen or felt or has the ability to do so um, in order to compare some knives. This is the Protect Newport. As you guys already know, this is being given away at 500 subs. I love this knife. I think it's awesome. It's my first real automatic knife. Um, I mean, just see, look at the hand when it fires. Like everything just like ripples. It's great. Might be because I'm getting overweight, I don't know. But, uh, the, yeah, the Newport is fantastic. It's a fantastic little knife. I wouldn't be giving it away for any other reason other than the fact that I want to give something away at the 500 sub mark that's, like, powerful. It's a big punch. I just don't want to give away, like, a Civivi Doris that anybody can go get for 60 bucks. This is... I think this was about 160 to 170 bucks for this for this new port, and so it means a little bit more, holds a little bit more value, packs a little bit more punch when you give it away. So, the tenacious. This is the first knife that I've never told. I might have told on camera, but I was doing something freaking stupid. I was taking it, and it was the first knife that had this like screaming sharp edge when I took it out of the box, and I was doing this where I was just running it through paper, right? And this is really thick paper. I'm not actually trying to cut it. But I was just ch chopping the paper, and it was just slicing through. Well, I got too short, and I hit my thumb, and it chopped off the freaking cap of my thumb there. Uh, so anybody goes back and sees stitches or anything on that thumb, that's what that's from. It's kind of embarrassing. Really stupid. But, you know, it's the dumb stuff that we do with these. Uh, not a huge deal. This <laughs> beat up poor little guy. This is my uh, Spyderco Tenacious all serrated. Um, instead of grabbing a saw like I should, I grab this knife anytime I gotta cut down tree limbs or something like that. Is it the most effective? No, but does it give me an excuse to use a knife? Yes. So I, I at one point in time, in the very beginning, had both of these and was carrying both of these at all times uh, to work and everything else, which is pretty kind of hilarious, kind of dorky, but I guess that's what we do, right? This is my baby girl, baby boy, whatever it is. My Spyderco Manix 2. I put the carbon fiber scales on there. I did an acid wash on the pocket clip because a deep carry pocket clip on this doesn't work for me. I did an acid wash with a light tumble on the, you know, some rocks and stuff on the blade, and then I resharpened it up. I this life, as everybody knows, was my first love. Uh, this thing opened my eyes to ergonomics. It opened my eyes to kind of a fidget factor. You know, oh my goodness, I love this thing. I intended to keep upgrading it. But you kind of have to weigh out, do I keep upgrading this or do I keep getting knives for the channel, you know? Because these upgrades get expensive. A titanium cage right here, right, for this piece right here to change that out, which you don't really need to because it's black and patches, but we all just want something better. Um, it was like 40 or 50 bucks, and I'm like, dude, I can get like another budget knife for that, review it, add more content to the channel type of thing, so. The Spyderco Astute. 
awesome little knife. I think it's pretty cool. The action on it is so snappy. It fires like when you when you hit it in the right spot, it almost fires like the Protec Newport. That's kind of what it reminds me of. The Newport hits so hard that this thing, it's detent combined with the only place where you can hit the spidey hole because it's so small. It just fires hard as hell. It's insane. Uh, love this knife. I will probably get rid of this knife at some point in time or another. I'm not married to it. It's not not ones that I that I would intend to get rid of. And then my Defcon Kabuto. This one was the first like, oh my gosh, titanium. Oh my gosh, you know S35. Oh my gosh, carbon fiber. You know it just uh, just feels like a super high quality knife. And then when I played with the action a little bit, it did this, and I'm like ah. Uh. Ah. And so this kind of grew my love for DEFCON, which is why I gave this knife a chance, the TP68, which is much cheaper. I'm glad I gave it a chance. It's a pretty cool little knife, awesome budget knife. If you're using it for Fidget Vector, it'll rip up your fingers, but that's a separate side note. Then we have the Ferrum Forge Falcon. Uh, this one was probably my first or second love along with the DEFCON Kabuto as far as titanium. Um, titanium handle, the way titanium feels, how it's slick, but it's weird that it's like, this is kind of like a blasted titanium maybe. So it, it does provide slight traction, but oh my goodness, the ergonomics and the choke up position, ridiculous. I kind of want to re-review this knife because um, I feel that I've grown a little bit since I've done that just two months ago or three months ago when I reviewed it, but oh my goodness, holding this thing in hand, whew. The one thing that I do wish about this knife, I was using it last night and I was kind of doing like a push cut, right? The curvature of this blade, they're trying to do this drop point curvature. And, and as you're going, it's so curved that as you push like this, you want to draw when you're pushing. And, and the blade facilitates that. So when you're pushing, you're drawing, but it's so short of a cutting edge, maybe two and a half inches, that you run out of cutting edge real quick. I wish they would have done this in a worn cliff. A Warncliffe or even a sheep's foot to where you get almost a straight edge for push cutting like that. Ah, I, I think I think that would have made this, this this thing would have been dangerously fantastically awesome. If any of that makes sense with all those adjectives. Last but not least, well, no, last but not least, I have my. This was my trial knife <laughs> for the acid wash finish. Uh, it's got a VG10 blade or no CTS BD1, I think. Um, the James Brand Folsom. You know, I had a James Brand Carter and then I bought two Folsoms because I loved this knife. This James Brand was the first brand that I got into before I got into knives. So I was getting into, you know, the stupid shit, the counterfeit stuff, the fucking whatever, you know, you're starting to look and you're like, I can get this for this price. Well, then I grew out of that and I bought a James Brand. I got the Carter and the Carter was pretty nice. Um, it, it screamed a gentleman's knife, uh, it didn't really scream too much of a user to me, but it had these thumb discs that drove me nuts instead of a thumb stud that I just, uh. But I got this Folsom and I'm like, oh man, this thing is cool, you know? And so I loved so half serrated, half straight edge. Well then you start listening to everybody, especially being new and impressionable and all that, and you're like, well... You know, having the half and half gives you the worst of both worlds. You only get a short period of serrated and a short period of straight edge. You know, it's all on your own preference. I'm kind of glad I got away from that because blades with serrated, half serrated, and half straight look kind of not as cool as like a straight edge or, you know, that that's going back to these two. That's why I got one of each. I got the straight edge here, the spider cotinaceous, and, and the serrated. I actually cut through aluminum banding at work with this, which don't do that, like you're not supposed to, but that's why I got the serrated. It helps me cut aluminum off the axles of the trucks that come in that, you know, my guys dumbly let it wrap up until they freaking have to, anyways. But, so anyways, James Brand got me into it. Now, let's talk about James Brand. There is, this thing is like 110 bucks. There is nothing freaking special about this. You got G10, G10, stainless steel, yeah, it's... There's a little bit of milling in there, but re and you got this aluminum, you know, backspacer, and it looks cool, but realistically, I just can't. God, these knives are so freaking overpriced. Um, and it's funny. You, there's a Cedric Aneda video that that portrayed it very well. 
you know, you got these knife brands coming out there and they're labeling themselves as classy, gentlemanly style knives. And this is super thin. The profile on this is great. It disappears in your pocket. It's not deep carry. They should have thrown deep carry on it. But they, they classify it as the gentleman's carry. So they don't sell any knife that's over three inches. They got this chapter knife that's like two and three quarters inches and it's like all titanium, but it's like 400 bucks. And I'm like, with what you're competing with, you don't stand a freaking chance now. But back in the day, I was like, how do I save up for that chapter? Anyways, going back to the Cedric Canada video, what he talks about is he talks about how the, the gentleman's carry knife, what they'll do is they'll make a knife, they'll make it gentlemanly, and then they'll spike up the price by like 25% just just because it's quote unquote a gentleman's knife. And, and, and I can see that. I mean, there is nothing special about this knife. CTS BD1 steel, I mean, I talked about it before, it's semi-exotic at this point. It's not exotic, I get it. But it's semi-exotic to the point where all we hear about is D2, 8CR, 9CR, OS10, OS8, you know, and you hear about S30, S35, but you don't really hear about CTS BD1, so it's like, oh, okay, it's a little bit exotic, it's cool, it's different, so maybe I will, no. No, like nothing about this. Yeah, I, I just, I don't think there's anything about these knives that are worth the price. All right, so last thing I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna go through and show which knives I'll eventually probably get rid of and which knives as of, at least at this point in time are a forever knife. So the two rats, they are forever knives because they are, you know, channel uh, comparison knives. The Elementum, is probably a forever knife just because it's the staple unless I get an upgraded elementum which I don't see myself ever doing the backlash I may or may not get rid of eventually I love it but I'll never use it again and I just it's not that I'll never use it again I just there's so many choices when you get into this like I reach for my my Manix 2 my super freak my Defcon my puffin you know and I reach for those over the Civivi lineup it's not because I don't like the knife it's just that you know, getting my hands in all these different knives, I'm finding out what I like more and more, but this was the first knife that I really fell in love with the moment it touched my hand. Um, and actually it came super dull from Blade HQ. I think it was somebody else's first. Anyways, long story short, I don't know if I'll ever get rid of that. The Dogma, I will get rid of when I upgrade, and so I'll get rid of the regular Dogma. Obviously the best tech is Corey's, that will be going back to him. The Berserk Revo, or the Revo Berserk, that will probably go away eventually. Um, if I can fix the detent and feel comfortable giving it to someone, then I will. Until I can fix that detent, I, I don't see a reason to give somebody a knife that is potentially dangerous. The QSP Copperhead. This knife is going to be probably a forever knife. I just, I love this knife. This is a straightforward, awesome action, awesome blade, thick blade stock. You feel like you can beat the shit out of it. Decent slicer. Um, if I ever am scared to use my Super Freaks, it's 200 bucks versus the 60 bucks that I got this, then <laughs> this is what comes out, right? My Honey Badger Warncliffe, I don't know that I'll ever get rid of this. I can't say it's definitely a forever knife. I'm not married to it for any other reason other than I don't feel bad using it. Um, and it's a brand that I only have one of, so until I get another Honey Badger, that's probably be there forever. The QSP Puffin, you guys already know. I'm more than likely not going to sell this knife. The only thing that'll get me to sell the knives that I say I'm not going to sell is if I really want to just like sell everything and buy like two awesome knives or whatever. But as you can see, my collection doesn't have like a ton of price points on it. It's not like a super high priced. My Fair and Forge Falcon, I don't think I'll ever get rid of this. Um, this thing, every time that I even contemplate what knife should I get rid of, like this immediately goes out just because of... The first time I held this, man. Oh, I, I, I'm kind of regurgitating that shit, but uh. the, the Civivi Darius, unless they come out with an upgraded model where it's like even more badass, I'll never get rid of that. The Fracture, I'll never get rid of just because it's like their memento knife. The two Feldspars, I'll probably never get rid of. I don't have any urge to get the, the Micarta versions. I don't really care to review them. If they show up and I review them, that's cool, but um, you know, these are comparison knives as well. The Protec Newport, you guys already know, I intend to give that away at 500 subs. The two Tenaciouses, um, I'm not married to these. I, I would give at least the straight edge away. The serrated I'll probably keep, unless I get a better serrated straight knife. But I, I have more beater knives other than the Tenacious that I would gun for, probably the Copperhead. 
Manix 2, she's not going anywhere. She's a forever beast in my collection. The Astute will definitely go at some point in time. I just don't have a reason to offload it now. And then the Defcon Kabuto. I love it. It's my first knife that like you have that you don't want to use because the materials, the carbon fiber, the titanium, the blade, everything. At the same time, I'm torn. I love it to death. I may at one point in time like, do a release on this just because I don't ever see myself needing this for anything. Every time I pick this up, I don't want to use it. It's just too pretty and uh, I don't know. So, other than that, if I were to talk about the Concept Cryo and these that I haven't reviewed yet. Where's the last one? Son of a bitch. I had one more. Ah. Well, that's Corey's. The CEO's definitely going back. The DEF CON TP68. I will, I will do a catch and release on this. Um, it's an awesome knife. Awesome action for 40 bucks. Um, this may be a giveaway knife in the future. This may be, I'll just try to sell it for 30 bucks or something of that nature. The one thing that I hate about it is these thumb studs here and these thumb, these thumb studs here, like they're stupid sharp. They're like eating at my fingers every time, but you want to fidget with it because the action's so good. Um, that's frustrating for me. That's about the only frustrating point about this knife. Uh, if I ever chose to keep it, I would probably round down those edges, but the concept cryo. So far, I love this knife. I probably will keep this until, and maybe even after, if I can get my hands on the titanium version of the cryo. Um, that's how much I love this knife. I do want to buy the titanium eventually. Um, we'll see how that goes. But that's an awesome knife so far. I have limited use with that, though, because I just got it. And then the Civivi Odium. Um, this is going to be a catch and release. I, I like it. It's very novelty. Um... You know, it, it's it's a tiny freaking knife, but, you know, it, it carries some value to some people. It's, it's super fidgety. You can spidey flick it. You might be able to thumb flick it. I, don't, I, I can't thumb flick it with the way I hold it. I can slow roll it. And then it has the flipper tab, and it's just tiny. I mean, it might be a good knife to keep, you know, in your car, in your fifth pocket, whatever. So I don't know. I, I probably am not going to keep that. I, I, don't, I don't know if I will. Anyways, this is my collection, guys. Huh, I got more for you. Hold on. So this is the rest of my collection as far as my knife stuff goes. This is a homemade stropping block. I got some synthetic leather on here that I threw some half micron diamond compound on that works fantastic. No need to buy a strop, but I might buy some more leather and create another one. Um, that thing works. This works awesome and probably in total short of the compound. Cost like three dollars but this setup I got before I knew what I was doing and this was probably the smartest buy that I've bought since before I knew what I was doing this is a sharpening kit comes with an angle finder I don't use the angle guide it's about time to unwrap these anyways I just use these so I wrap them in paper towels so that it soaks it takes all the water out of them so I can still put it away and then take it out afterwards but this has a this is a Shapa Shapu wet zones um, 240 800 grit and yes these aren't the most expensive wet stones you can get but they're nice 600 1500 grit we have the doo, doo, doo. I have a cat that sounds like he's dying in the bed in the bedroom. Um, we have the 5,000, 10,000 grit. And we also have, I think this is going to be a 3,000, 6,000 or 3,000 something. 1,500, 3,000 maybe. 1,000, 3,000 grit. So I use this for most of my sharpening needs. Um, I do have a super cheap diamond stone that's like 400 grit uh, that I got super cheap um, that I do use on occasion for, like if I have to like do something with M390 or something like that, I mean, I need something a little bit more beefy than these to save me some time. But other than that, this is my setup for sharpening. It's a pretty good setup. I think this whole, 
box case with everything that it came with maybe cost me 90 bucks. Uh, I would recommend something like this to beginners if you want a whole set. What do you need for sharpening? You don't need that whole set. Get a 200 to 400 grit and a 1,000 grit and learn how to sharpen on that and then figure out what you want. Do I wish I would have done that? No, because I'm glad I got the kit. But, you know, it, it's realistically you do all your sharpening from the 400 to 1,000 and then you kind of move on from there with the polishing side of things. And it teaches you more to be more patient with your stones. Not a sharpening video, though. So anyways, guys, that is my collection. That is my setup. That is what it means to me for each and every one. If you guys have questions about anything that I own, feel free to ask. Again, these are the giveaway knives. The Fug Out. The Wrench. Oh man, you're gonna, you're gonna throw this thing away when you get it. And then the Bronca, the Penguin, and the Centros. And then my review knives that I have coming up, so you guys can know that this is coming. The CEO, the Odium, the Concept Cryo, and the DEFCON TP68, which you can't help but flip, but then you're like, oh shit, that hurts my fingers. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been Everyday EDC. You guys stay sharp, stay safe, have a great freaking day.